Hey, where are you guys? Are you in Grandpa's attic? Wow, look at all this cool stuff. Cool stuff. <laughs> Put that grave between a bunch of junk up here. <laughs> Except for this, I've been looking for this. Let's go back in the bedroom. What's that, Granny? Get the cookies. <laughs> I get to lick the spoon, so I gotta go. So I'll be back. Have fun. Don't break anything. Okay, Grandpa. Okay, Grandpa. <laughs> Hmm, that's a very good question. Let me take a look here. So we can get presents. Yeah. Okay, but the presents, there's a little bit more to it than that. <coughs> How about we go back to where it all began? Yeah, that's the creation story, not the Christmas story. Right. Genesis 1 1 is the creation story, but it's not the Christmas story. So why don't you all sit down and listen? Long, long time ago was nothing. Close your eyes and see nothing. Only God was. Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God created everything. Then he created man and woman named Adam and Eve. And after six days, he rested. God tells us all that he created was good and everything went fine. For a while, but then it happened. Satan the devil told the woman if she ate the fruit from the tree in the midst of the garden, her eyes will be open and she would live and be as God, knowing good and evil. God only gave one rule to obey, which was not to eat of the tree lest they die. But she pulled the fruit and ate it. And so did Adam. That's when sin entered in. The world and that's why we're all born with a nature to do wrong, things which keeps us apart from God. Yet God way back had a plan. That plan would happen many years from that day. Day by day, he waited until the right time. When Adam sinned, one part of him, his spirit, the part of him that could know God, died. God knew that all the people born since Adam would be born spiritually dead unable to know and love God. But God wants to know him and love him, so he made a way for man to come back to him. As Adam and Eve left the garden, God promised that he would send the Messiah to earth to take the punishment for our sin. So the people who lived thousands of years ago began looking for that Messiah to come to earth, the greatest gift.
There were prophets who testified that the Messiah was coming throughout the whole Bible. People waited for that time when on one night an angel visited a young woman to give her a message. I'm going to read from Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 28, and Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 20. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee, Gal Galilee named Nazareth to a, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? Sing I not know a man. And the angel said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth shall hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed unto her. So Luke 2, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that an, all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made by Cyrenius, the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that they should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. 
you shall fi find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told concerning this child. And all that they heard, it wondered at those, and it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glory, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. That's right, for John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. Ha, ha, ha. 
better hurry because your preacher just got here. You can't read them all. <laughs> oh, Dad. All right, well, that was awesome. Wonderful job, children. And uh, Brother Mike, thank you. Miss Karen, thank you for your hard work. Miss Barbara on the piano. And uh, Grandpa, take a bow, you know. All right. Well, I want to share some, some, uh, some of God's word with you this morning. And you've been sitting a while. Why don't we stand, turn to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah 9. Brother David, if you would just... Uh, Open up those doors in the back. I think it's a little warm in here. Hopefully that will help out. Isaiah chapter 9. <clears throat> Just going to read two verses. Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Bless now as we, as we preach it and teach it and understand it for our lives in Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. You know, the people of Israel, back when this was uh, written and when Jesus was born, they were like any other nation. They wanted a strong leader. And, and so they were coming under attack from their enemies and they lost their independence and so they're praying to God that, that he would raise up for them a national hero, another Joshua or another uh, King David that could come in and, and, uh, and defeat their oppressors. And they, they imagined in their minds what they wanted, what they were praying for was this, this mighty warrior coming in, riding in to do battle with their enemies. And so they were praying, God, send us our Messiah. Send us a Savior. And God did that for them, but not in the way they expected. He didn't send them this conquering king. He sent them a child. And, and Jesus came, as you saw, I mean, in the most humble of ways, to the most humble of couples. He's greeted by humble shepherds. But otherwise, it pretty much went unnoticed. And often God's greatest gifts come in small, simple packages. You know, you ladies in here would understand that it, for Christmas time, would you rather have a big old box or something or a little jewelry case, right? Like, a, like, a, like diamonds, sometimes the most precious and valuable things in life are small. And the answer to all of Earth's problems, to all of our problems, to all of their problems, was given in the form of a baby, just a little child. And over 700 years before Jesus was born, God used the prophet Isaiah. Think about that, 700 years before Bethlehem. Isaiah wrote to foretell about his coming. And so inspired by the Holy Spirit of God, Isaiah wrote, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So a child, but not just any child. A son, 
but not just any son, the son of God given for us, this gift. The kids sang a song called The Greatest of Gifts Ever Given. And what a gift he was. Look at the names here as you kind of open up this gift from from the Lord and consider who this child would be. Verse 6 says, uh, his name shall be called Wonderful. Wonderful. And that's a word that we overuse today. Everything's wonderful, you know. Uh, But the word comes from uh, miraculous wonders that God would perform that would make people go, wow, look at the power of God. That was called a wonder. So the plagues of Egypt, you know, all of the the darkness and the, the plagues and the locusts. In the Bible sense, those would be called wonderful, not because people liked them, but because it made people sit up and say, what a powerful God he is. That was something that was wonderful. Uh, When the Red Sea was opened and they crossed over on dry ground, that was wonderful. It made them uh, stand in awe at God's power, a miracle that they would never forget. And when God sent his son to earth, he did so in a way that was wonderful. Not just because Jesus would go on to work miracles, but because Jesus himself, the way in which he came into the world, was a wonder. Turn back just a couple of pages to chapter 7, Isaiah 7, verse 14. He writes, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. I mean, nobody had ever heard of something like that before. A, A young virgin shall conceive and bear a son, it sounded impossible until it happened, until it happened. And her name was Mary. And by the life-giving power of God, she conceived and brought forth the Son of God. And that's important that, that he came forth from a virgin because Jesus didn't receive his DNA from Joseph and Mary. Okay, it didn't work that way. God chose Mary to be this vessel, this human vessel through which Jesus would come. But but Jesus himself was the son of God. And the problem with having a a human father and mother is that the whole human race and everybody in it, including the Virgin Mary, by the way, is tainted by sin. Every one of us. And every person born since the very first baby has inherited that sin nature from their parents. It's just been passed down generation after generation. But not so with Jesus because he was not conceived in the normal way. And he was not given life by two fallen parents, but rather directly from God. He had no sin nature. Jesus Christ was sinless. Imagine raising a sinless child. Whoa. (laughs) Never, Never throws a temper tantrum. Never has a fit. Never has a meltdown. Never disobeys never talks back. That's what it would have been like to be in the same household with Jesus. And he lived his whole life.